I adore I gave you everything was mine is yours I want you to live your life of course but I hope you get what you dying for be careful with me do you know what you do Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Shit, I'm 30. I'm your host, Dexty. And I'm Carla. We're back. Right? I feel like we haven't taken that many days off, but I'm excited to be back because I feel like it was a really long time. I know. It was just two days ago. I think that's the thing they talk about when you're doing something that you enjoy. This must be it. Yeah. No wonder we start getting paid. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so hard to focus at work now. It's so hard because I want to Google other things or like do stuff for the podcast. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be doing work. And then now it's almost close time for me. Right. And I'm catching up. And it's not like, like, I don't like my job. It's just. No, I don't like my job. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm good at it. I'm not passionate about it. Yeah, it's like so hard to focus. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I need to do a million things. And I don't know if you feel this way. I think actually we talked about it. It was like once I decided that, yes, I'm going to go full speed on like other things. Following our passions. Yeah, like a million things are coming at me and I feel like I have no time. I feel like I'm so busy. I'm so frazzled. I feel like I've been really busy too. It's and then test. really tired. It's a test. It must be. Because when we get, get me, I'm keep going. Right. Because when it gets real, we're going to be way busier. I know. But I feel like the day that we quit, oh my God. So I have a friend that she's getting ready to quit her job in May. She just told me yesterday. Oh, wow. To pursue like her passion, which is cooking. Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out to Zoe. She's <laughs> really good. So she's doing all these things with cooking. And she tells me like, she had to me she was really ready to work for herself and like now that it's she has a, a time and it's like that's so cool i can't right? wait that is can do awesome it. yeah it's super cool but i feel like you know like with me feeling so busy it's like it's it's gonna be it's already getting to a point where it's gonna be important for me to like my, your time is currency you know what i yeah. mean like you have to be more careful about how you giving it out who you're saying yes to about doing things like you know what i mean so yeah, like my weekends now, I have to cherish them. Right. I can't just be doing stuff just for fun because I, we have stuff to do. Exactly. And during the week, it's hard. I'm gone from, what, 8 in the morning? We don't come back till 6 if I'm going to work. No, yeah. I can't. I have to do it in the weekends as much as I can. Right. Mm. So that means we have to, like, break up with certain people <laughs> and certain things. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> and that brings us to our topic today. Which is breakups. Breakups. Sometimes I think it has a negative connotation to it. And sometimes breakups is a good thing. Right. It can be a new beginning. It is. And for us and probably most of the people listening, right, you probably thought by now you wouldn't be breaking up anymore. You thought you would be married. Yes. You know, have a couple of kids, be fully settled in. And I don't know like, about a couple of kids now. <laughs> it is like, it's like, what? I'm still dating? Like, what? And I feel like now... At our age, I'm looking at like on Facebook and on Instagram and everybody's now getting married. Right. And everybody's popping a kid. And I'm like, wait, am I on, am I wrong? But then I have to keep reminding myself, it's not a race. It's We're not a race. We're all on different paths. Exactly. We're all doing different things. I need to focus on me and not on what everyone else is doing. But this is the age when everyone seems to be doing that. But I don't feel I'm scared that some people are doing it just because they're supposed to be doing it. Exactly. Got to check off that box. Yeah. And I'm not mm-mm, not no. just checking off that box. <laughs> no. It is not happening. I'm living outside the box. Yes. <laughs> I'm making my own box. That's right, girl. Mm. I like Actually, that Actually, I don't even want it to be you a box. You having them jewels. That's oh. what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. But like a lot of us didn't think we would be here. I'm like, I'm sure the plan was go to school, get married, have a couple kids, be settled. And have your career already going. Exactly. Mm, we're taking a whole nother way. Oh, well. It's fine. Yeah. So what's the worst breakup you've had, Carla? Well, probably my first one was my marriage. Oh, you know, I'd be forgetting you were married. <laughs> Girl, because so I, was, I, was, I didn't know you as, I've never known you as married Carla. No, married Carla is very different. Yeah. I was young and everything, but when I left my husband, it was, it was actually really hard just because I was pleasing other people. Like, they were telling me I couldn't leave. I needed to stay married. Once you're married, you know, it's forever. Your child, you're going to hurt them. But I was hurting her more by being here and mm-hmm. arguing. Well, I didn't really argue that much. It was just me. Your children can definitely sense. Right. Oh, she things. was definitely sensing it because I remember she was so young. and we had, Him and I had this one fight. 
again, I think I was just fighting my, myself. He doesn't. <laughs> he didn't fight back much. But the next day, she was telling me like, "Oh gosh, she must have been like four or five. Like, why was I screaming at daddy?" And I'm just like, "Eh, you know what? It's better if she's in a." If we're in two different homes, yeah. it's better two whole homes than one broken one. Yeah. So when I decided to leave, it was hard. I like that. Two it was whole a, homes instead of one broken one. Yeah. And it was like, that's, right. I let it go. And then after that, I think I probably had one more bad permanent breakup. Mm-hmm. And that one was really tough. But I got over it. I was here. <laughs> and I had a whole nother boyfriend after that. I didn't die. I'm right. still breathing. I didn't slip my wrist. So that, you know, I didn't even think about that, what you just said, but that's like a whole nother level to it. There's people out there who are our age who are not only single and dating, but they are divorced and they probably, you know, have this whole other baggage they're carrying thinking like, wow, not only am I not married, but like I'm divorced. Like, yeah, I can can see how that could be even scarier. Yeah. You know, it didn't scare me. I was ready. (laughs) I'm a serial dater. <laughs> I went from one to the next. And they're all a long-term relationship, which is crazy. Yeah. So I, I'm a serial dater. But definitely, we'll touch into that because after breakups, you have to take time. Yeah. But we'll touch into that in a little bit. What's your worst breakup? So my worst breakup was <laughs> um, my first relationship after um, my relationship ended with Michaela's dad. So I probably was like 22 years old. <laughs> That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a while ago, but it was really my worst breakup. So the guy I was dating, right, he was the first guy that I dated that wasn't, like, a thug. <laughs> right? So this was totally new to me. And, like, I was just trying to, like, do something different and start something new. So when I went into that relationship, and the stuff that I'm going to be saying right now is, like, I didn't realize these things when I was doing it. But when I was dating him, like, I thought he was better than me. Because of, like, his background and stuff. So, first of all, like, so he was in, like, the biggest, coolest frat on campus, right? He was a DJ at, like, the hottest club back then on, like, the hottest night. Oh, so he was popping. Yeah, so I'm like, you know, he popping. A little old me, like, you know, I'm, like, fresh from the hood. (laughs) (laughs) And I got all this baggage from, like, you know, everything that went down with my daughter's dad or whatever. But, so... That relationship didn't work out because back then, like, I didn't know how to express my emotions, right? Like, I I had two emotions. I was happy or I was angry. Like, I I wasn't comfortable. When we first met, you were still struggling with some of that. I was not comfortable expressing any vulnerable emotions. So, if I'm sad, I'm going to express it as anger. If I'm hurt, I'm going to express it as anger. So, when I was in that relationship, I was never really myself. So, of course, that didn't last because how long can you put up a front, right? <laughs> Not long at all. But the reason it was my worst relationship, I mean, my worst breakup is because, like, after that, I went to therapy. Oh. Straight up went to therapy. Well, that's a good thing. Because even in all that, I recognize that you're dealing with some shit, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. why you always, like, mad at people and you don't know how to, like, express your anger. So, like, probably, like, six months after that breakup... This was well before Instagram, but this was during um, Facebook. Like, I would go check his Facebook, (laughs) but his Facebook was private. So the only thing I could see was the picture, and I would still go look at it every day. The, just the picture. Just the picture. To and it the- was usually like a flyer because he was a DJ. Okay. He didn't even put like a picture. And I used to go check it and see where he was going to be and just like look at it. You didn't show and up? Just, no, I, I would never show up. I would have been too embarrassed. But I didn't realize it then. But like I was depressed. So like I went to therapy and I was like learning how that, you know, you're actually not angry. You're sad. <laughs> yeah, you're hurt. <laughs> you're hurt. And this is how you say it. So it was the worst breakup I had. But I feel like that was when I like learned that i had issues i didn't fix those issues then right but i <laughs> but at least you were I aware of them yeah and became aware of them but yeah after that when you, if you're once you're aware of yeah. them and you just want to keep doing it that's just a completely different story that's a whole different story that, yeah. i just want to stay mad exactly and there's times where i want to stay fucking mad yeah all the time and i'd rather beat your ass <laughs> than deal with what i got going on inside like no yeah but that was my worst breakup i so, was like I felt like if I can make that work, like, yeah. But did you guys fight about it? So, what's the, did you guys break up on good terms? No, mm -mm, no, we didn't break up on good terms. To be honest, I don't remember, like, 
the reason we broke up you know what i mean i just remember like the relationship as a whole and there always being an issue and whenever there was an issue of course i'm just mentioning it from my side like right. what i did wrong you never know what the other yeah side yeah i mean and even if i do know some things because we have had a conversation since then like it was that i'm telling you why it was bad for me like I was depressed. It's all because also because like Michaela was so young. I also felt like back then, like I needed to hurry up and get a positive male figure right. in front of her. And so I was like depressed that that didn't work out. Like, yeah. So now I figure out why I never thought like that. The worst. I, I, in my relationships, I never thought like, oh, this is going to be my next husband. Oh, because I just got out of a damn marriage. That's you why. Married. Yeah. <laughs> I want another one. And then also your dad was yes. a dad for Ayana. I never felt the need to have a man there for her just because. Right. Because she had your dad. She had my dad. He yeah. was always there. And then, yeah, even when her dad gone, I would be really angry at her dad because I never imagined in a million years that he would leave her and I. Mm -hmm. So, well, I loved him. But still, I didn't think he would separate himself completely from her. And then he did. Mm -hmm. And that was so hurtful to me because I'm like, even though my dad was nowhere near perfect, he was always there, I felt like. Mm -hmm. I never felt like he wasn't there. Even with whatever happened between him and my mother, Yeah, I never felt it with myself mm -hmm. so i'm like how can you not be there for your daughter right like what is wrong <laughs> so that was a lot of anger that i had but as long as my dad was there i was fine so i think after my dad passed away that's when i got really angry yeah but now he's well the judge said bitch you finna pay you finna be there okay <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna take okay. don't be, oh, grr, don't play with this goddamn judge now because i put your ass right back in jail oh grr. exactly oh, no not back in jail but in jail yeah what's the proper way to break up that you so i feel like nowadays with social media and everybody texting communication is so much less now for us what's the right way to break up i can tell you how i broke up with somebody in middle school his name was miguel and i told him <laughs> that my granddaddy before he died told me that i shouldn't be with him no more and i broke up with him oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was like 12 yeah but what's the right way to break up with someone I don't know if there's necessarily a right way or a wrong way, right? Because I think it depends on, like, the relationship as a whole and the reason for the breakup. In most cases, like, when I've broken up, it's been, like, they did something wrong, most times cheating, and it's, like, it's clearly over. So there's no <laughs> conversation that needs to be had. You know what I mean? It's, like, we're So you done. don't talk to yeah, them again. Exactly. Like, we're done. Like, I don't know if, there, I, I don't know if there's, like, a right way to break up. Because I feel like, do you do it over text? Do you do it on a phone call? Do you have to do it face-to-face? -face? Sometimes it's better. To, I mean, be, doing it over text over the phone seems so impersonal and like you don't care. But sometimes that's necessary for the relationship because you might have that person who's going to pull you back in. You know, you're going to have those feelings. You're going to want to touch on them. Or he might be crazy. He might be hitting you. Like, you got to go. Girl. He might be abusive. He might be the type of person who's, like, going to snap on you. So I don't think there's, like, a blanket right way. You I always I mean? feel like you needed to do it in person, just out of respect. But you're right. I didn't think about the fact that there's different reasons why you're breaking up. So yeah. there might just be some times that you just need to block them and never say a word again. Exactly. And I also believe in, like... It's okay to do what's good for you. Like, that's okay. You don't have to worry about that other person's feelings so much. Like, unless you, like, legit breaking up over some, like, mutual understanding type thing. Nine times out of ten, we be breaking up. It's because something, somebody's not doing somebody right, right? So why are you so concerned with how he feels about the way you break up with him? That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. But, I mean, if if it's like a three, six month relationship, I get it. But let's say three or four years. Three or four years. If he cheat on me, I do not have to come and say, hey, I'm breaking up with you. You didn't come and give me no alert that you finna cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. No. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, what do you true. think? I've, I, I felt always like to do it in person. But then I, I couldn't. Well, the last after my husband I broke up with the guy after that. I don't even remember how I broke up with him. I think I told him, you need to leave my house. Because mm -hmm. he, he actually was staying here. And I was like, you need to leave. When I came home, everything was gone. See, 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 that's, that's why you know you should have broke up with him when he was gone. Yes, <laughs> His girl. stuff on the line. He took, every, even cereal, girl. He stole <laughs> cereal. He stole toilet paper. He took my gun. He took... Ayana's we. He took everything. So if you're listening, I mean, you can drop the stuff back off to my porch, okay? <laughs> oh, wow. So you broke up with him. So he was living with you, and you broke up with him, or like, hey, you got to be gone by the time I get it home. It was All Star Weekend. And he basically I robbed you. Yeah, he robbed me. 
That is so Straight crazy. Me. I know. I was pissed, but I just let it go. I was like, fuck it. I can replace all that. And then the one after that was the hardest one. I was with someone for a year and some change, and we probably shouldn't have been together. Um, I found out a few months later that he was married. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But by this time, we were deep in it. And I won't go too much into that one, but mm-hmm. it was really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Like, that's when I thought, like, everything was over. But how'd you end that one? He basically told me, like, oh, he broke up with yeah, you. Yeah, he okay. left me. And I. In person? No, over a phone call. No. Broke up with me over a phone call when things went, when shit got real. Yeah. <laughs> things went down. And then we actually got back together for a couple of weeks. There was like a back and forth for about two months. Mm-hmm. And then he came and stayed with me for a while. Then he left again. And then it was time for us to like break up, break up for real. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had to stop talking. Yeah. And it was, it was done. And I thought I was dying. But then I started dating someone probably about three months later. <laughs> It was more of a, I, I can't say rebound because him and I were friends also beforehand, but it helped. Yeah. It definitely helped to date someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and it helped that they were like, oh, come on, fly here. Let's yeah. fly there. Let's hang out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that helped me out. So I don't know. So closure. Do you think closure is possible? And if so, how do you get it? What the fuck is closure? <laughs> I can't stand that closure word. Closure from what? Right. It's if it's over, it's over. Yeah. If it's gonna keep going, it's gonna keep going. Like there's nothing you can say to close a chapter. Well, I'm sorry, I loved you very much. Well, if you love me, I know you love me, so it is what it is. You're never gonna have closures. That's just time. Yeah. I don't so, think there's such thing. I feel like yeah. So closure is like also like I feel like it can be used as an excuse to linger into the relationship. Yes. But I do believe that closure is possible. And I do believe it's necessary before you move on to another relationship so that you can move on to that next relationship with your baggage neatly packed. But wait, <laughs> because you mean, that's, you're talking about personal closure, though, right? I'm going to get to it. <laughs> oh, OK. Because I like really thought about this. Because the reason I'm saying like having your baggage neatly packed is because I feel like with each relationship, you're going to take some baggage with you. Right. But like when you get that closure, you understand your baggage and you understand how to unpack that in your next relationship when it shows up. But I believe the closure you're going to get from yourself. You're not going to get from that person that you broke up with. Okay. So and you're going to get that closure by examining that relationship and being real with yourself about what you did in the relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether it was right or wrong. Also, how did I end up with this person? How did I attract this person? If it was someone who was toxic for you, like what yeah. was I putting out there that like made me be with this person knowing in the back of my head that they were wrong for me. So I, I think that closure is possible, but I think it's something that you get from yourself. Cause I don't think you're going to get closure from knowing why X, Y, Z cheated on you. And you're not, yeah, I don't think you're going to get closure from that. I don't th- think that's going to make you feel any better. I think if anything, especially if you're still in those feelings, it's going to help you have an excuse to leave them. I mean, to stay with them. Cause they're going to be like, Oh, well I was vulnerable or I was drunk or, you know, you mean, mean you were arguing a lot. Like, yeah. Now, weak. if you feel like a conversation needs to be had, then send a letter. Yeah, or a text or, message. Yeah, oh. or a text message. Or like, if you do feel like maybe you did somebody wrong and you need to have a conversation or somebody did you wrong and you need to have a conversation, I feel like the safest way for you to do that is after those feelings are gone. And probably nine times out of ten, once those feelings are gone, you're not going to feel like you need that conversation anymore. Actually, I feel like I got closure from so the really bad breakup that I just told you about. It was difficult. We were in a position where we probably shouldn't have been and we should have let it go beforehand. But we were friends before. When it happened, we were we were friends, and that's how it all started. So for years, for a few years, we didn't speak. And when we spoke again, it was like, I'm sorry for this, and I'm sorry for this, and like shit went a different way. And that helped me. Like There will yeah. never be anything between him and I again, but it's like, wow, thank you. Mm-hmm. Th- like, honestly, thank you for that. And I think like he can say probably the same thing. And that was probably the most mature breakup I've ever had (laughs) or after breakup. (laughs) Yeah. But I definitely think that closure is something that you do need, but it's absolutely something that you get from yourself by giving yourself time and examining that relationship to see like, you know, what you did wrong, what you could have done better. Or why you stuck around for so long. Exactly. 
Like, Absolutely. Because well, sometimes it might be something wrong, not wrong, but things that you're dealing with as of why you dealt with certain things that you shouldn't have dealt with. Exactly. Why did you put up with that shit? Right. <laughs> 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 so how do you once you're breaking up with them and you get this closure how do you get to that point how do you get over the breakup how do you get to that where you're feeling peaceful okay and this might be extreme because my friends have told me that you this are is extreme. extreme when i really break up with somebody and even if i know i'm not quote unquote ready to break up with them right but i know i need to I delete their number. <laughs> but you, don't delete, how, you don't know them in your head? No. I delete their number. I delete the message thread. I delete any way of me getting their number. Thanks. Right? Get the fuck out of here. I've done this a million times. I Listen delete now, everything. Then I, first, well, sorry. I block the number. Then I delete it, right? From my phone completely. Okay. That way I know the only way that I can get this number is if I log onto like my phone account. But if I feel like the time frame for me do that, I'm going to be on top myself down. You know what I mean? I make it so I can't get to this number. So you no don't know people's possible. phone number by heart? No, I don't know about nobody phone number. Well, my grandma who's had her number like for years. I know everyone's number by heart. I don't know my number. Yeah. So anyway, listen. So I, okay, I, blo- I blocked the number and I delete it all. That way, even if I want to talk to you, I can't. And that way I can't go be reminiscing on our old messages when things were good. You what know about what pictures? I mean? Delete all that. Block you on social media. Let my friends know. Don't give me no updates on what this person is doing. <laughs> if we have mutual friends, I distance myself from those mutual friends. Or if I'm close enough to those mutual friends, I'd be like, look, like, just don't give me no updates or, you know, don't invite us to the same place or whatever. And then I immediately start moving on to like trying to quote unquote heal. And I throw myself into something productive, whether that's something involving work, trying to the get a promotion, gym. trying to get a new job. The gym. That's how I got over my last breakup. You the got gym. fine as fuck. <laughs> Oh, you made me mad. Like, get you a boyfriend already, man. Yeah, like, I get that distraction, but I always make sure the distraction is something that's, like, productive. And that's going to make me, like, Is a that person. now? Mm-hmm. Or was, have you always been that way? I've always been a cut cold turkey. <laughs> I can't do but that. But moving on to something positive after the cut cold turkey is probably, like, a post-25 thing. Because it used to be a cut cold turkey. I'm about to hit the club and get me a new one. <laughs> the best way to get o- over one is... Wait, what is it? The best way to get over a guy is to get on another one? Like, <laughs> Oh, on him. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So, it would be a cut. It's always been, like, a cut cold turkey. But, like, never... It wasn't before, like, a move on to something productive. I have never cut like cold turkey. P- productive. My um, turkeys are hot. <laughs> it's never been cold i can't do it i'm such i'm such an emo bitch like <laughs> always emotional so i can't mm-mm. i'm a cancer i'm he- i'm so emotional like and but that's why like i keep myself busy and i know you can't avoid those feelings at night when you land <gasps> down by yourself that right? is the worst but time. i try to make sure like i'm so busy and so distracted that i can't help but crash when i hit that pillow you know what i mean like yeah. I, i'm sad but i gotta go to sleep because i've been running since who knows what time <laughs> yeah. 5 30 in the morning at the gym like right. <laughs> no man i can go to 5 30 in the morning i'll be tired as hell but still at night yeah. when that shit hits it, me it, but when that hits you you don't have that number to call because you don't I know block the number by it heart. And it. i know numbers mm. i can look at the number one time i remember it oh yeah no yeah it's really but you sad. just gotta and then or even if it's something of like Writing down all the fucked up shit they did, so you can oh, refer I've done to that it. Too. <laughs> and then I read it over and over, and I sit there and cry. And then I, and then what I do is, once I'm done reading it, and I'm really pissed about all this shit they did. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna call you and tell you how pissed I am, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm real mad about it, and I'm just I start calling, and I'm like, you know what? And this is the fucking reason I don't want to be with you. <laughs> and then they're like, all right, I'm like, leave me alone forever. And then they're like, okay. And I wait 30 minutes and I'm like, oh, so you're really going to leave me alone? <laughs> I really, I got some more shit to tell you. And then I keep going until like two hours later, we're like, I love you. Oh my gosh. And then gosh. get back together. Yeah. That's why you got to like, you can't talk. If you really want to end it, you can't talk while those feelings you are can't. still there. You, you cannot. Can, you can't. It always leads to breaking up and making up. Exactly. Which is what, girl, I am an expert. Also, that leads us to the next topic with their breakups. Breaking up and making up. Yeah. I, I got a PhD for the past, what, five years, girl? Ooh, we are so good at it. <laughs> we can teach you how to do this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I've had the best makeup sex ever <laughs> <laughs> through this one. Because it's like, well, 
I can say I had never, even when I tell you that I was with a married guy, I never felt like I was, I had ever been cheated on. So Wait, I've been cheated on every time. No, I had never been cheated on until this relationship a year in. And that broke me down because growing up, I mean, I would see my dad do his dirt or whatever. And I'm like, let a nigga cheat on me. <laughs> see how quick I'm not even going to say their name. I'm not talking no more. I'm done. I will never, it will never happen to me. Mm-hmm. Um, then it happened to me and I lost my fucking shit. <laughs> I went batshit crazy. I could not believe it. I'm like, is this, I didn't know how, what I was going to feel. And I felt like I wasn't good enough. I, it was awful, an awful, awful feeling. And then I needed reassurance from him. And I'm just like, why did you do this? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. And I don't think when him and I got together, I don't think he was ready for, I think he wanted to be ready, but he wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely wasn't ready to start talking to him because I had just gotten out of another relationship. Yeah. So I, again, didn't give myself the damn time I needed to take. Right. So I feel like our first two years were a hell of a fucking ride <laughs> because neither one of us were ready to be in a relationship. I should have taken my goddamn time <laughs> off. But I didn't. So we'll break up. And I think the longest has been maybe three months. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a good one. I got to like think a lot in that one. I feel that has made me stronger. Mm-hmm. And I went back because I always <laughs> go back. <laughs> I can't even say why. Because I mean, he's a great person. It's just we bump heads a lot. But at the same time, we have really good fucking times. And we spend so we really love each other. So we break up and make up. But I do know I've him and I have spoken I'm fucking 30 now and mm-hmm. if it happens again for whatever reason it's it's done and so yeah. I'm hoping that it doesn't go that way but we're good now so I had a breakup to make a relationship before um I was in a relationship with this guy I would call him a serial cheater because <laughs> he's a cheat all the time so we won't but it was like, I was silly for being in a relationship with him in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, when we met, we were dating for probably, like, two weeks. And then we already had a title child. Like, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Like, you my man. Quick. Yeah. And you know what? It and was his idea. Love. And he pushed it. It always be the ones that's cheating, won't you? <laughs> like, quick. Like, let me wipe you up. <laughs> and so you're like, yeah. oh, my God, he really loves me. Exactly. Yeah. So, we were together. And then, like, probably, like, just two, three months into the relationship, he cheated. I found out he cheated. Um... That's quick. That's quick, girl. Something told me go through this man's phone. I go through his phone. There's no messages with no girl or nothing. What is this something? I'm sorry to answer that tells you to go through the phone. Because it tells me all the Intuition. time. <laughs> Intuition. But um, so there's no message between him and a girl or nothing. But I read his message between him and his brother. And he talking about <gasps> how the girl came over. He knocked off real quick. He like, no. yes, yes. It was the text message between him and his brother that I read. I'm like, mm. so bitch is coming over and you just knocking him off real quick. Oh, my God. Yes, he was asleep. I read the text message. And you didn't hit him with the phone? No, I just got up and left. He didn't even know I left. Oh. And then the next morning, and I let him know, like, nigga. That's the chromosome I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. The walk away. Yeah. But so we broke up, right? And then we were doing, like, the friend thing because I'm like, oh, he's not a bad person. He just wasn't ready for the relationship. You know, we just met. Like, it was just a mistake. So we're friends. He has a whole other girlfriend now, right? The girl pregnant. We're a whole baby. <laughs> the girl pregnant. You know, he's like, oh, I'm just with her for the baby or whatever. So we're doing the friend thing. He breaks up with the girl. Probably like the the baby, probably like three months old or whatever. And me and him start dating. You should never date a man with a baby younger than two years old. Girl, if I knew then what I know now. But so a little while into us dating, he comes over. He's like, hey, I need to tell you something. Um, I just had another baby. (laughs) Me and him probably have been back together for probably like three months again. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. When I was with, what's her name? I cheated on her with a girl who had a, her, her, the girl had a boyfriend herself. And so when the girl was pregnant, she thought that her baby was her boyfriend's baby. Oh, so the hell. girl calls him like two days before that. It's like, hey, I just had a baby and I think it's yours. I'm at the hospital. I want you to come take a test. These bitches are fertile. Yes, girl. So he had two break babies, basically. But I was like, you know, he didn't cheat on me. He cheated on her. So let me stay with him. Oh. Oh, and you stayed? Girl, I was so stuck on stupid. Okay, so Gabrielle. Yes, stayed. Yeah. 
So I'm like, you know, it's not like he cheated on me and had this baby. He didn't know the baby was coming or whatever. So we just having our little relationship. Relationship just rocky because I'm dealing with two baby mamas. Baby um, mama, like times two, right? Girl. Like, don't nobody get along. Don't nobody like each other. Like, so much drama. But I'm like sticking That's to draining. it. We probably like it was so draining. Like we probably lasted like another year, maybe year and a half. Then wow, one day, that's a long time. Yeah. Then one day the 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 first well not even the first baby mama she's the second baby mama but anyway, um she sends me a text message. It's a picture of her on his bed naked. <gasps> yes, girl. Yeah, that's when I was finally like, okay, enough is enough, bitch. I want to fight. Who? Hit? I want to fight like, him right you now. You have all like it's like I was. I had to ask myself like, what are you sticking around? You for? You know what you should show him? What your income tax return? <laughs> right. Send it to him. Send him a picture of your house, <laughs> of your car, how much you make, and be like, look what you let go of and what you was cheating on. It's like, and did he? I I don't. He just he just ain't no good. Like, and he he married the second girl that he got pregnant. But it's like right before he got married, he called me to check on me you know they're cheating on her now right and yo his call to check on me was him trying to cheat on her like oh, you hell. checking on me like you should have checked on me when you was cheating on me that's what you should have checked <laughs> don't check, check on yourself me now. before right. you wreck yourself like are you serious Damn. right now you call to check on me i said don't call to check on me i'm just fine just fine when i needed you to check on me like be there for me in our relationship where were and, you and do right by me you weren't checking then okay checking other bitches <laughs> exactly but yeah, that 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 back and forth, especially when it's a long period of time, it could be messy. Because I feel like, well, we're on a break. Got we we feel we be getting over it by like being in our feelings and crying and stuff, right. and they be getting over it by getting with other bitches, right? <laughs> by swimming and some, listen, exactly. No, that that's funny because I wanted to talk about those breakup babies, and you stayed. I did with two yeah. breakup babies. I did. So the two celebrities that I can think of and big stories about break babies were Dwayne Wade and Ludacris. I did not know that Ludacris had a break baby. Yes, and I just had this argument with Jay. Well, not an argument, but it was like, I know he had a break baby. He's like, Y'all no, he didn't. Y'all heated debates. Always. And I love when I call you and you're like, what? Always arguing about something. So the Ludacris one, we looked it up. And yes, yeah, so he they were broken up. He has this girl pregnant. Then he proposes to the... You, what's her name? Uke City? Uke, I don't know how you fucking say her name. Exit? Exit sign. I don't, I, I know. don't know. <laughs> Whatever her name is. And um, she's so pretty, though. He proposes and marries her the same day. Mm-hmm. Right away, they um, apparently go for full custody. He gets full custody of the baby. Like, right away. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing. But they, they have the baby. But the Dwayne Wade room with Gabrielle Union it was so different. Yeah. Gabrielle was like, I don't want this goddamn baby right here. Oh, really? Yeah, because I that baby was not at the wedding. It wasn't. No. Aww. It was so sad. That is. But sad. at the same time, it's like I feel like if you're taking him back, then you're accepting what he did, and you're accepting the baby. Like that's yeah. horrible. I think that I, I'm not sure. I probably should have made did more research on this. I think the baby comes by now more, but you don't see him anywhere like mm-hmm. you see the other babies. Yeah. And the nephew, too, because he has, like, the full custody of his nephew. Oh. But I don't know if I would be able to stay with a break baby. I know now that I wouldn't be able to because I try to do it. And it's just too much drama. And it's that constant reminder of what happened. And it's right. that constant, like, oh, how long have y'all been together? Oh, we've been together five years. Oh, his baby three years old. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And it's not it's yours. It's that constant reminder. It is just the drama, like. It's just too much. It's just too much. Yeah, and I feel like those baby mamas Mm -hmm. will not ever stop being baby mamas because they feel like they were able to get him and get pregnant while he was still in love with you so they can still get him back. Yeah, I don't want to never say never, but I definitely feel like it's it's a hurdle. It's a hard thing. It will take a very mature, whole woman to be able to do that. Like, Or a chick. Like one of them two got. <laughs> you got that ludicrous check. You know what? Yeah. I might oversee that little yeah. baby. Which that brings them to the topic of shit talk. <laughs> I'm really excited about this one. I'm really fucking excited about this one because I want to talk about baby mamas. You want to talk a little shit. I want to talk some shit, okay? About bitter baby mamas. Uh oh. Now, anyone who has social media has probably seen a meme where it describes 
the difference between a baby mama and the mother of your child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. you would think it's the same thing, but it is not. A baby mama has, I think nowadays, a negative connotation. And it's just a female who's mad at the fact that she can't have you back. So she becomes spiteful, jealous, and crazy. She tries to make your life a living hell. She'll do anything she can to make your, the relationship with your child difficult. Um, she doesn't care if she hurts the child in the process of just being an asshole. Because she's mad. Big mad. Now, the mother of your child is a woman who knows that it's over. She has no hard feelings anymore. I'm sure it probably will take time to get over it, but there's no more hard feelings. She works with you. She compromises. Um, and they have you guys will have a lasting, healthy relationship for the sake of your children and making sure that everything is good. Mm-hmm. My shit talk is to you, baby mamas. <laughs> Listen to me. And I can say all this because I feel like I am the perfect, stellar example of a mother of your child. I don't give a fuck what my baby daddy got going on because now he's a baby daddy. <laughs> he's a baby daddy, god damn it. I don't care what he has going on. I don't care if he has a girlfriend, a boyfriend. If he wants to become transgender and be like Caitlyn Jenner, I will take him out shopping if that's the case. Be there for your daughter and we are golden. I will not question you. I don't care what he has going on. Really could care, couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. But... These other women, and I've experienced that and been on the side on the side of getting the hate from the baby mama. Mm-hmm. And it's like, baby girl, our children are the most important. Yeah. And if you have a woman on the other side that doesn't, no one's going to ever replace a mother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. alive, you will forever be the mother of that child. So stop being bitter. Stop hurting your child. Stop making things so damn difficult. Yeah. Just be fucking happy and move on. <laughs> You've got to move on. And I mean, if it means you got to get a new little penis on the side, get what, do what you got to do. But don't expect for that person that now that there was someone else for them to do for you as they're doing for their new partner, because it's not the same. So I just, oh, Lord, that made me hot. I, I've never, I've always had, an, whenever I've dated someone who's had a kid, I've always had like, and been in a situation where the baby mama's just like, hate me and they hate me like without even meeting me or giving me a chance but looking back when i find out things later on it's always because the guy was on some like not being honest stuff maybe like leading them on yes like still acting like they have feelings and so it's like these girls are looking at it as though if you weren't in the way like i could have this man like every time it's like oh this girl just hates me like i haven't done anything she's not giving me a chance she's saying i can't be around the kid every time y'all. you're right there's every always time, like it's always this guy he's like playing with this girl he's like leading her on like i'm so nosy you know how like every now and then <laughs> rick ross baby mama gets really messy on social media yes i really want to know like what's that about like is she just messy or is rick ross really like a crappy dad like i really want to know i have no idea there's always like his side her side, her side and exactly. the truth. That's true. That's so true. I feel like when I experienced it, for sure, there were some things there that were going on. I can understand why she felt a certain way. But after so many years, sometimes <laughs> I wonder, like, why? We can be, we could have been friends by now. Yeah. You know, I like to cook. I could, I could have made her a meal. <laughs> you know, like we was gonna cook with the adobo. Uh, yes, I'm going to put some adobo on that bitch. I like the creel, too. Sazon? Yes, I put some sazon on there. I would have made her some good fricasse con pollo. Hey. Like we would have, it would have been lit. And the baby would have been eating real good, too. <laughs> but, you know, I just wish that at a, certain, at a certain point, we all have to, like, let go. Yeah, that's true. And even if it's not just, if you, even if you don't have a child with that person. So, yeah, I'm talking shit about baby mamas right now. But even if you're not with that person, it comes to a certain time when you have to let go, let them be, and you move on with your life. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So that was as much shit as I can talk today. <laughs> Whew, that made me feel so much. I feel lighter. Um, you, feel, you, 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 you just let that. You just let it out. Just I let, let it out, out. and Ooh, I feel like just listen up. I lost a pound off of that. I have some unsolicited advice, and you kind of actually almost just touched on it about like you know it just comes a time when it's time to let it go and it's time to move on. But I feel like so for my unsolicited advice, I'm talking about like when it's just like because we've all been there, right? Like it's so hard to move on and it can be for different things for most of us. But I think most of the time, like the root cause is just like fear, like fear of being alone when it comes to like breaking up with somebody. So my unsolicited advice for anybody who's out there who's in a relationship that you 
no, you ha- you need to end it. You have to end it. Like, stop letting fear, like, keep you from finding your real happiness. Mm-hmm. When we want something so bad, it's like when something that even remotely looks like it shows up, it's like, oh, let me have it. I can make it that. Like, I can I can make it become what it, what it needs to be like. Yeah. No, don't force it. Like, stop selling for this shitty ass relationship <laughs> and give yourself a chance at real happiness. Being alone does not mean that you are lonely. I can say I'm I, scared of being alone. I know. That's most of us are. I most am of terrified. us are. But being alone does not mean that you are lonely. That's what I'm saying. Like I would and it's just like I'm just saying this to try to like encourage people to let them know because I know like I have been there before. There's so many people out there. But like you are worthy. And once you find happiness within yourself, like you're never gonna be alone. But don't be afraid. That you're going to be alone and cause that to make you, like, settle for, like, some bullshit. Like, we are bomb, y'all. Like, y'all are bomb. Anybody listening to the Shit Up 30 podcast <laughs> is bomb. Oh, for sure. If they're listening, they're y'all listening. are the shit. Yeah, like, so don't be afraid. Like, unsolicited advice for 2018. Do not live in fear anymore. Step up and tell these niggas who ain't shit to step out. <laughs> 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 well that's gonna wrap it up for us in this episode of shit i'm 30 about breakups and makeups we're not breaking up no me and you Mm-mm, no we're not this we will not be kaya and what's her face um t.s madison i'll be kaya <laughs> no don't be kaya. you know what you probably would be kaya, the guy of the relationship <laughs> Cause yeah, like, it looked like Kaya be like ready to fight before T S Madison would. T S would be like, baby, but let's just be friends. Yeah. <laughs> so we want you guys to send us stories about your worst rela- re- um breakups. We we definitely want to hear about those. Those could be very entertaining. Send us stories about how you got over those relationships because you know somebody out there might need your help. Like share in the comments. Let us know what you did to get over that. And tell us about what happened during your breakup to make up. And were you able to stay around for a break, baby? And what does that look like? Like, how do you guys deal with that? Yes. How do you co-parent? Because I'm sure, right, it's possible for some people. Clearly. Right. So, yeah, we would love to hear it. But thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. We'll see you next Friday. Don't, and don't forget to follow us at Shit on 30 Podcast on IG. And where can they listen to us, Carla? On iTunes. Make sure to rate and subscribe. Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And that was a rate and subscribe, you guys. Rate and subscribe, please. And if you don't know how to rate and subscribe, hit me up. I will walk you every step of the way on how to rate and subscribe us. And I'll shout you out for doing it for me. Talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.